having bionic eyes. I don't know if you remember the six million dollar man. He had bionic eyes. We're on the verge now of creating an interface between the human eye and the brain that would allow people with faulty eyes not only to see, but we're also on the verge of allowing people who can see normally the ability to see beyond human limits. This is where we're headed. Uh, the article talks about brain-computer interfaces, giving people who cannot speak the ability to speak. Brain implants, uh, body implants, the article talks about. Um, Performance-enhancing body implants, so that there is a fusion of technology and humanity. This is part of what is known as the singularity. Now, I'm going to read you an article about what the singularity is and what it involves. And I know not everybody is technically minded. I, I kind of am, but there's some things that I don't get. I mean, I use technology. I mean, I'm using my cell phone here. I'm using a microphone here hooked into a digital camera. This camera is taking my image and my sound, and it's converting it into zeros and ones. And when I get done, I'm going to take this and download it into my computer, well, let's see, that would be uploading. I would upload it into my computer so I can edit it. And then when we're done, I'm going to put it on a digital, versatile disk. Or I'm going to transmit it digitally to the Internet so that you can get on your digital interface device, which is a computer, and watch what I'm doing here in our secret broadcasting compound. We are using technology everywhere. But we're this technology and people's understanding of what we're able to do with the smallest and simplest devices is growing exponentially and it's leading to the part leading to the part of human evolution that they call the singularity let's look at this article what is the singularity and will you live to see it if you read any science fiction or futurism you've probably heard people using the term singularity to describe the world of tomorrow but what exactly does it mean and where does the idea come from we answer in today's backgrounder the term singularity describes a moment when a civilization changes so much that its rules and technology are incomprehensible to previous generations Think of it as a point of no return in history. Here again, a paradigm shift. Most thinkers believe the singularity will be jump-started by extremely rapid technological and scientific changes. These changes will be so fast and so profound that every aspect of our society will be transformed from our bodies and families to our governments. Remember, we are living in an age right now where we have a president who, who um, campaigned on the idea of transformation, fundamentally transforming the United States of America. We're looking at churches now that are promising transformation to everybody, and these are usually outside of the cross of Jesus Christ. We're living in a world right now where we can literally see the transformation of everything in this world into a completely new world order. That's what the singularity represents. The article goes on to say a good way to understand the singularity is to imagine explaining the internet to somebody living in the year 1200. Your frames of reference would be so different that it would be almost impossible to convey how the internet works, let alone what it means to our society. You are on the other side of what seems to be what seems like a singularity to our person from the Middle Ages, but from the perspective of a future singularity, we are the medieval ones. Advances in science and technology mean that singularities might happen over periods much shorter than 800 years. Talking about the singularity is a paradox because it is an attempt to imagine something that is by definition unimaginable to people in the present day. But that hasn't stopped hundreds of science fiction writers and futurists from doing it. Uh, where does the term singularity come from? Science fiction uh, writer Werner Vinge popularized the idea of the singularity in his 1993 essay, Technological Singularity. There he described the singularity in this way. 
It is a point where our old models must be discarded and a new reality rules. As we move closer to this point, it will loom vaster and vaster over human affairs until the notion becomes a commonplace. Yet when it finally happens, it may still be a great surprise and a greater unknown. What technologies are likely to cause the next singularity? As we mentioned earlier, artificial intelligence is the technology that most people believe will usher in the singularity. Authors like Vinge and singularitarian Ray Kurzweil think AI will usher in the singularity for a twofold reason. First, creating a new form of intelligent life will completely change our understanding of ourselves as humans. Second, AI will allow us to develop new technologies so much faster than we could before that our civilization will transform rapidly. A corollary to AI is the development of robots who can work alongside and beyond humans. Another singularity technology is the self-replicating molecular machine, also called autonomous nanobots gray goo and a host of other things. Basically the idea is that if we can build machines that manipulate matter at the atomic level, we can control our world in the most granular way imaginable. And if these machines can work with their own. And finally, a singularitarian thought is devoted to the idea that synthetic biology, genetic engineering, we're going to talk about that, and other life sciences will eventually give us control of the human genome. Two world-altering events would come out of that one. We could engineer new forms of life and change the course of human evolution in one generation. Two, it's likely that control over our genomes will allow us to tinker with the mechanisms that make us age, thus dramatically increasing our lifespans. Many futurists from Kurzweil to Stuart Brand to science like Aubrey de Grey have suggested that extreme human longevity in the hundreds of years is a crucial part of the singularity. So in other words, this article is explaining to us that the, the things that we see going on right now, the rapid evolution of electronics and electronic devices and artificial intelligence is one of these days they say it's going to change all of the rules and then give mankind the ability to change his own DNA. To rewrite, as David said, in thy book, he's referring to God, all my members were written, which in continuance was fashioned when as yet there was none of them. David was describing, by inspiration of God, 3,000 years before Watson and Crick dis discovered the DNA double helix, David was describing the human genome, or DNA. In thy book, he described it as a book that God wrote. And I believe, just as God wrote this book, God wrote the book of our DNA. In fact, God is the author of all life. Everything that has DNA in it, in this world, in this universe. God wrote that book. And there are rules concerning that book. God said you shall not add to nor take away from the words of the book that I have written. And so here we have man now who is getting smarter. He seems to think he is getting smarter by the day and now is on the verge of the ability to rewrite his own DNA, making him into something that in his eyes is going to be far better than his own humanity is at present time. Here is an article uh, concerning Intel. We're making steady progress toward Ray Kurzweil's singularity, says Justin Ratner, CTO of Intel. The singularity, that's what he's talking about. You know the point where machine intelligence jogs past human intelligence and brings us to a new era where combined computer cognition is the equivalent of a minor deity. What is the singularity really? It's where machine intelligence surpasses human intelligence even by just a tiny bit. At that point, the machines, which are now more knowing than we are, can, rec can recursively improve on themselves in a never-ending and rapidly accelerating cycle of getting better and better. Kurzweil tones it down a bit and simply says it's going to be a time where machines can manifest their own rapidly advancing technology. The implications of a meteoric rise in technology, self-replicating smarter than human intelligences, and you know super beings, it's all still there though. 
Perhaps in an Intel's mind, the singularity involves computers designing processors for their next of kin to the point where...